Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be taking a closer look at this IBM OEM copy of Windows 3.1. This was recently sent to me from the fine people at Free Geek Twin Cities and I did a little unboxing video of what they sent me because they included some additional extras as well which I really appreciate so thank you very much guys once again. And a lot of you guys expressed interest and I was already thinking about opening this up and installing it on on one of my computers of course the 98 PC because what else and well that's what we're gonna be doing in this video we're going to also compare the user's guide here to the retail one that you would have received if you purchased well a retail copy of Windows 3.1 and we'll see if there's anything different about this copy compared to a standard retail copy of Windows 3.1, which I don't really think is going to be the case. I think at the very most we might get a different boot screen because I had seen images of Windows 3.1 boot screens or loading screens, whatever you want to call it, with an IBM logo added. So that's honestly what I'm expecting, but you never know. I've never taken a look at one of these before. So let's just go ahead and since the shrink wrap was already tearing down here, Let's just continue that and open this thing up for the first time and we'll see what it's all about. So one of the things that I noticed right off the bat is that the user's guide in this thing, which by the way, I know I'm going to say this again because I did mention this in the last video. I really love the blue Windows flag. I think it's just a really nice touch. It goes really well with the IBM logo and the blue text all around the you know, manual. Of course, a very simple change, but yeah, so really, really nice. We'll go ahead and set that aside. We've got a piece of cardboard to, you know, divide the manual and the disks. And we have the disks contained in this envelope right here. And of course, on the back of it here, you've got your IBM license agreement, read first media envelope, and you know, it just contains floppy disks in it. Uh, so we'll open that up in a moment. But We'll set the uh, shrink wrap aside. I do want to take a brief look at this manual and compare it just briefly here because I know this is not going to be the most exciting thing, but I did notice that this manual is much thinner than the retail manual. The bottom one there is the retail manual, and uh, in fact this is uh, Tweeterman 287's copy of Windows 3.1. I unboxed this in a donations video recently. He sent along uh, some cool stuff that I unboxed, and something I didn't mention in that video, he actually signed in here he wrote, have a good summer. Wait, this isn't a yearbook. Hi, MGT. Hi, Eddie. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Tweeter, man. I did not. He uh, sent me a message after that, and I was like, crap, I didn't show that in the video because I didn't realize. I just didn't even open up the uh, user's guide. But, yeah, so the retail user's guide is, let's just see here, going by numbered pages, of course, because you got all these, how many blank pages are in here? Holy crap. Counting numbered pages only, it's 650 pages. The IBM OEM copy here, also on the back of note, you've got IBM technical support info. For answers to your questions and help with technical problems, use the Windows Online help feature if you have a data modem and CompuServe membership. Access the latest technical notes, which address the most common Windows-related support issues, or technical support is available from an IBM Windows technician. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you could call IBM's help center. So let's see what we got here. Uh, definitely not going to be 600 pages. This one is 292 pages. Oh, and there are completely different chapters as well. Like chapter 12 in here is additional accessories. Chapter 12 in here is customizing windows. And you see they all start on different pages. So this is a different user's manual. Perhaps it's a newer, more streamlined version. I have two copies, two retail releases of Windows 3.1, and they both have this exact same really thick user's manual. So I know it's the user's manual people probably don't really care but I just thought I would mention that because I found it rather interesting and yeah let's go ahead and get to the the main event here there we go so let's reach in Ooh, check that out so that's a completely different label IBM Windows V 3.1 diskette 1 so you've got I assume six diskettes right yep same number of diskettes so that's been unchanged but i really like those labels that's really nice and that's everything so i guess all we have left to do is install it all right so we've got the 98 pc with ms dos 6.22 installed and we've got our lovely ibm windows 3.1 diskettes here so let's pop diskette number one into the 98 pc's three and a half inch floppy drive 
and hop over here to the, well, I don't want to do that. Uh, <laughs> let's hop over here to the A drive. That was control A, not shift A. Yay, there we go. Yeah, it's just kind of standard so far. I don't know how many times I've installed Windows 3.1 on this channel, but I would, <laughs> I would guess to say, I would guess to say that doesn't make any sense. I would estimate that it's probably a lot. That's not an exact estimate, but you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, we'll go with the default settings. That's all good. I'm kind of curious, maybe they modified, you know, when you put in disk three and it brings you into that graphical portion of the setup, maybe that was modified a bit with like an IBM logo or something, or it might just be exactly the same. I don't know, but I'm definitely curious about that boot screen and it's asking me for disk two. We'll do the nice diskette swap here. I don't know why I'm announcing this because it's uh, rather boring, but uh, <laughs> oh, it's after diskette two. It's right before you put in disk three. That's right. So yeah, so far it looks exactly the same. Name and company. We'll do Michael and company. We're gonna do IBM. Oh yeah, we're being an IBMer today. All right, continue. Uh, set up only Windows components you select. That's fine. Not gonna bother with printers. That's good. That's good. It's already asking for disk three. And it's time for the final disk out. I'm probably gonna speed up a lot of that because I mean, you guys have seen it like 90 billion times already on this channel. So let's just pop in disk six and get that last 4% there. Got to copy those true type fonts, man. Oh yeah, what would we do without them? And we'll let setup make all modifications for us. That's fine. And we will return to MS-DOS. So here's the moment of truth. We're gonna pop out our diskette number six here. And let's type win. Oh, there's, okay, hang on a second. <laughs> that's the third time now. Well, that isn't good. I'm guessing that's a display driver thing. Uh, Cause it just, straight up doesn't show anything <laughs> which is so lovely uh so maybe we can find oh what is the name of the I, I think it's a bmp okay so i believe the logo is stored in one of these two files we got vga logo.lgo and vga logo.rle and i think we can uh i think we might be able to open this with paint let's see choose associate from file menu to create an association okay associate uh, associate with paint. Oh, just, oh, it's PBrush. That's right. Let's see. Format of this file is not supported. Okay. And VJLogo.LGO. Okay. So that's not right at all. So let me go ahead and copy these over to um, a floppy disk and bring them into a modern computer and we'll see if we can open any of these up because I believe, I think the RLE file is just a compressed bitmap, run length encoded bitmap. That's what it is. It's just, yeah, compression, common gym format using early versions of Windows and CompuServe software. So Paintbrush won't open it, but I believe MS Paint on Windows 10 will. So let me get a blank floppy disk get here because we're going to get to the bottom of this. Well, I'm glad we confirmed that, but let's just explore around a bit. I'm curious if we go into help and about if there's any branding in here. Oh, there is uh, not a logo or anything, but you've got please contact IBM's help center. You got their 800 number. Although I don't think Windows 3.1 ever displayed manufacturer logos in the about program manager. I think that started with Windows 95. You know, when you would go to uh, my computer, right click properties and you would get that pop up, you know, system properties and it would have at the bottom the OEM logo if there was one. But yeah, I'm looking through here and there aren't any additional programs. Not that I would really accept expect any. Uh, I wonder if we go to the Windows tutorial. I wonder if this has been modified at all. This looks pretty standard so far. We'll say yes, we're a skilled mouse user. And yeah, we actually went through this in, oh gosh, what video was that? I think that, was that the Windows 3.1 anniversary video? I think it was. I, I, I went through this thing in that video. Um, we'll just get out of this because that's pretty standard. I would think if they were to add a logo or something that would be done at the beginning. I wonder if we go to help contents. Yeah, this is all standard from what I can see. Got your 
basic how-to stuff, all the things you would need to know to use Windows 3.1 efficiently. Yeah, overall, it looks pretty standard. Really, the IBM reference in About Program Manager and the boot logo are the only things that are changed, which, to be honest, that's really only the things that need to be changed. Uh, I think it's nice that they have a custom boot logo, but even that isn't really necessary. Uh, you know, and I think Microsoft's goal was to keep Windows, you know, consistent across every partner, you know, every OEM that they worked with to where, you know, if somebody had bought a gateway computer and then bought a Dell PC or a Packard Bell, you know, with Windows 3.1, they would expect the same experience, you know, so you don't want to modify it a whole lot. But I think that's a good stopping point. Why don't we open up Solitaire here and just maybe move a couple cards around while I do the outro here. So yeah, uh, there you have it, guys. That is, I got to do two things at once here. That is taking a look at the IBM OEM copy of Windows 3. Point one. I want to again give a huge thank you to the fine people at Free Geek Twin Cities for selling this to me. This uh, definitely was really interesting. I had not seen this before, like I said, and I thought it would uh, make for a fun video. And well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.